Let's go to somebody you've known well, somebody who is who's also a drug smuggler is Barry Seal. Who is Barry Seal? How did you meet him? Barry Seal is a friend of mine. Uh, Mari and I and the children went down in uh, Honduras and we went up uh, Lake Azul, I believe it was, and we were looking at a, a ranch to buy. I was looking for something in Central America where I'd have a, a halfway place. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was lovely. We stayed up there for some days and our clothes got muddy and we went in the river and all kind of thing. So we got to San Pedro Sula and uh, we was going back to New Orleans. So uh, we went to, to the cleaners to get our clothes and most all of them was in there. And they go, oh, senor, they'll be ready tomorrow morning. We're not ready now. Well, the plane leaves at 9 o'clock or whatever. So I told Mari to, to, for her and the children to go into the airport because it'd be easier for one just on a standby flight. So I went to the uh, laundromat for the clothes, and they were ready, and they was a pile of them. And I put them on my back and got in the taxi, and the old taxi would drive him with it, and I'd give him $100 to go faster, and he just blew his horn more rapid. So <laughs> <laughs> finally, we got to the airport, and I jumped out and ran around on the tarmac, and here's a brand-new 727 taxiing out. Wow. Oh, no. So I'm waving to the pilot, and he's a young fellow. He waves back. Then I see Mari's face in the cockpit, and the nose goes down where he puts on brakes, and he laughs, and he puts some stairwell out. And I run for the stairwell, and he pulls it back up and goes like a hitchhiker, going to pick you up and go, go yeah. again. <laughs> then he put it out, and I got on, and the whole crowd clapped, and I'm coming on with that load of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so I go way down in the middle, and the plane's full, and Miriam, my daughter, is about nine years old then. And she was sitting in the middle, and by the window was Barry Seal. Of course, I didn't know it. And I sat in the middle, and uh, we took off, and the wheels come up with clunk. And then I got up about 5,000 feet, and we had a little clunk, clunk. And she said, what was that, Daddy? And I said, he just turned on his autopilot. And that fellow reached over, and I looked at him. I said, he looks like CIA or FBI, something. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't supposed to be here. Yeah. Clear blue eyes, gentleman-looking man. And he he said, you fly these things? I said, I got a few hours, mister. He said, I, I fly them too or something other. And he said, my name Barry Seal. And he reached over Miriam and shook hands. And we uh, got to talking. And uh, I thought, there's no choice of seats on this. It's just open seating. So, But I don't believe him one bit. <laughs> and he started talking about he just got out of jail that morning. Just got out of prison. <laughs> and I said, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and he told me that he'd been a pilot with the um, TWA and this and other. And uh, he told me what, what he was for. And so we had a nice conversation for a couple of hours to New Orleans. <clears throat> I didn't believe him. Yeah. So he got off in front of us, and what a crowd of people were to meet him. An old mother and a wife and little children hanging on to him, crying and hugging and kissing him. I said, he was telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So I reached over and gave him a a little piece of paper. I had Mari to write it out with our address. I said, Barry, I might have some work for you. <laughs> what was he in jail for? He, had, he got caught with 100 kilos of cocaine in a small plane. And so he served a year. And that was uh, from Colombia? I don't know where it come from. He got caught in Honduras, probably refueling. But um, he'd, be, he'd been in prison down there before for bringing explosives to the um, con Cuban Contras. And he lost his job with the airlines. And then later on, I found out he was ex-CIA and George Bush Sr.'s protege and had a thousand parachute jumps and was there. He, he was a hot shot pilot. There's a million questions I want to ask here, but um, maybe can we linger on it a little bit longer? What was your relationship with him like? Well, you, that, you were a drug smuggler. He's a drug smuggler. Um, your friends... How often do you guys talk? How often do you work together? What was the relationship like? Well, I'll back up and just finish where I started off there. He, uh, I, I gave him a thanks, Barry. I may have some work for you. I know I got some work for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I says, uh, come out to Santa Barbara. And so, I don't know, a week or two later, he flew out and went to our house and stayed with us a couple of days. And I had a almost brand new uh, Aero Commander 690B. That thing was turbo prop, and it was hot. It was the hottest thing I'd ever had. So I said, let's go, Barry. Let's see what you can do. <laughs> so I'm sorry I said that. We got about 10,000 <laughs> feet. <laughs> and he was like one of them Blue Angel pilots. He wrung that thing out. 
Yeah. And I said, that's enough. And then um, he did a falling leaf. That's where you cut the engines and the plane falls from side to side. And I saw Bob Hoover do that in an air show once. And that's the only person I ever saw do it. And I was, my hands was white knuckle hanging onto the seat. You shut off the engine? Yeah, he shut off the engines and landing, flying side by side like this. How do you explain that? Was he just uh, a wild man or was he sufficiently skilled to work? He was sufficiently skilled. Absolutely. He knew what he was doing. I can get a plane from one spot to another, and I guess I'm known as a good pilot, but that guy it was aerobatic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he stayed with us a couple of days, and then I told him, I said, this plane needs uh, needs tanking. I, I said, I got some work down in Columbia. needs to come back to Louisiana, and I need 2,500-mile range. He said, I got somebody in Mena, Arkansas to do that and keep their mouth shut. So I gave him $10,000, and he flew away. And in a few days, he called me and says, come to my house in um, Baton Rouge. So I went out to his house in Baton Rouge, and I stayed with him for a few days, and that plane was tanked. I mean, beautiful from stem to stern. I could went from Bolivia to Canada with him. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he was, uh, then I hired him to fly, and uh, he was funny. I paid him a million dollars a trip. I paid him $2,000 a kilo, so about a million dollar trip. And I didn't get paid until they, the, the people received it. They had to ship it to Chicago and New York, and then the money come back. So it was, it was a couple of two or three weeks pipeline. Well, I was had to pay him before, I, before he'd go again. I mean, and he belly ache. I mean, he had moaning groan. So uh, one time I, uh, I gave him a million dollars and I put it in a box real nice. So how big is a box that contains a million dollars? So we're talking about hundred dollar bills? hundred dollar, it's not very big. You can put it in a large briefcase. It weighs exactly 10 kilos. Each, <laughs> each, each bill weighs a gram, so you can weigh your money and almost get it exactly so ten, right. 20 something pounds is a million dollars. 22 pounds. 22 pounds. A hundred dollar bills. But a hundred in one dollar bills, it's one ton, 2,200 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even accept them. Were you the one that introduced Barry Seal to uh, Pablo Escobar? No, I didn't introduce him at all. And uh, he and I, our deal was that you don't meet my people. I mean, we just mm -hmm. kind of crossed. You worked it for me to fly the airplanes. So he wanted these Panther conversions, cost four hundred thousand dollars each, with a storm scope and radar. So I bought anything he wanted. What's that mean? Sorry to interrupt. Panther conversions. A Panther conversion was a these people called Panther. They took everything out from the firewall, and the instruments, and all, and converted them and put Q-tip propellers on them, full bladed, and you very quiet. And the CIA developed those in Southeast Asia for running behind the lines. And that's where Barry had flown those things, so he knew about them. Mm -hmm. So uh, hey, that's what he wanted, and that's what we got him. How does that connect to Pablo? And so he well, worked for you, and you got those upgrades. I, I think he flew about 30 loads for me, and then I got arrested and, and was better for everything in the world. Got 35 years sentence. But let me back up a little bit. Barry... Uh, was our friend, uh, Mari and I, both friend. We should pause real quick and say, Mari is uh, uh, your wife, and we'll hopefully she'll uh, we'll convince her to join us in a little uh, in, in a little bit. She's the love of your life, and sort of she uh, weaves in and out of many of these stories that you tell. Yes, she was there. She was behind <laughs> the scenes, but I kept her out of it completely. And then also, you mentioned Miriam as a as a, your daughter. Yes. Rhett, well, our son, was a was a baby. Yeah. And uh, I remember we went out to the festival. It was my favorite restaurant in Carl Gables. Oh, God, it was good. <laughs> and Barry knew about it. Anyhow, we went out to dinner. and uh, So we came back, and there was no rooms. So Barry will spend the night with us. So he goes to our hotel room with us, and we got two two big beds in the, the Omni Hotel. And he lays over there and gets down to his stripish undershorts and his T-shirt and he puts the baby up on his belly and gives him the bottle. Said, mm, "Ain't that good, Red? Oh my, my!" And he just <laughs> feeds the baby. We laugh and talk, and yeah. so that's how close we were that we could all stay in a hotel room together. <laughs> so, and would you say he's a good man? A wonderful man, a gentleman, southern gentleman. Just he's looked after his mother, his family, everybody around him. Everybody loved Barry. He just had a he had a little little smile on his face always so you got arrested and then uh, what happened to barry well barry knew the the people that uh, unloaded of course he sent the cars down all that so he met the unloader a guy named leto Luis carlos bustamante 
a Venezuelan, and uh, so he just kept on flying. Mm-hmm. But he, uh, he, I believe he had three of my airplanes at $400,000 a piece, and they owed me some money. Well, he collected a lot of that and gave Mari the money and put it in his safe and took her to his house and all after I got arrested and sent a lawyer in. He got me the best lawyer in the country, Albert Krieger. Mm-hmm. He was head of the defense team for all of America. Wonderful man. 